Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Good evening, everyone. My name is John, and I'm an alcoholic. I don't really want a drink. It just seems a thing to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for asking me to share, Linda. And uh, thank you to the first three speakers. Really enjoyed that. Uh, some of the things that first guy was coming out with. But uh, no, it's, it's all true. <laughs> I've, uh, I've graduated from the toilet, though. Uh, it's no longer residing in the toilet. And... Um, See me afterwards if you want a full explanation of that. And um, I, uh, and I still like the sound of my own voice. You know, um, you know, probably a, hopefully a little self, uh, less self-centered around that than I used to be. Um, what a joy it is! And um, I uh, tomorrow, if I keep my nose clean, keep doing this thing for another another 24 hours, I'll be 15 years sober in the Road to Recovery group of Alcoholics Anonymous, Plymouth. And um, I mean, it's just, uh, it, you know, it beggars belief for someone as barking mad and as alcoholic as I was, you know, that I've, uh, you know, that I've stayed sober at all. Now, I didn't, um, as I've often shared, <clears throat> didn't uh, suffer the consequences that people who've pushed this, you know, a bit further than I did, um, suffered. You know, I managed to skillfully avoid treatment centres, skillfully avoid losing the driving licence losing my job, and um, just about uh, hung on to my marriage, and, um, you know, it was, uh, but it was no, it was no uh, good management or skill on my part, really. You know, the fact is that, you know, long before I arrived here, I'd lost control of my drinking, and um, I was fortunate that I came to a group like this and got a copy of the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous and was able to see the writing on the wall, was able to see where an alcoholic of my type will end up. Now, obviously, you know, the big book says that many of us pursue it into the gates of insanity or death. And, um, you know, and I, and I, and I could see that. You know, I could see that these, these, I mean, my life was an absolute shambles and make no mistake. I may have avoided those things, but it was dire, you know, but, um, I had avoided, uh, some of the, some of the more, uh, severe consequences, if you like. And, um, <clears throat> It didn't mean that, uh, you know, I operated with any degree of decorum or dignity when I was drinking, you know, especially in the last couple of years. It was, um, you know, it just seemed to um, drop off like a ski slope, you know, as Bill talks about. You know, it was just, the last couple of years just seemed to get, just got worse very, very quickly. And um, up until then, you know, the drinking, I, you know, I, I enjoyed drinking, you know, as Wayne describes, you know, it was the, it was the thing that had, it brought color to my life. You know, it was, it was the thing that I looked forward to. You know, even before the last couple of years of my drinking, I couldn't imagine, I wouldn't have been able to imagine life without alcohol because nothing, nothing else came anywhere near giving me that, that, uh, you know, that feeling that life was okay, that life was worth living. If you took drink away, I mean, it, it basically would have been all over. And, uh, I was self-centered and selfish in the extreme, you know, long, long before I arrived, long before I arrived here. And um, that's the reason I had to come here, you know, because I was like that. And uh, I, um, you know, I had, um, I've got a few minutes, so I might better regale you with some of the, uh, some of the stories. You know, but I, I, I mean, I, I, I was, I was like that, you know, that bit in the big book where it says, you know, people would have been shocked at how such a seemingly above board chap could have been so involved. You know, and, uh, and that's how I saw myself. You know, I saw, I saw myself as this seemingly above board chap. But um, there was a few people, you know, there's a few people around me, my wife particularly, who, who knew that was that uh, it was far from that. <laughs> and um, you know, I, I mean, when I came into, you know, not long before I came into AA, you know, we had a um, my wife had a daughter, and she was probably a year or two years old, and they'd be sat at home watching the TV, and I'd be up Freedom Fields Park climbing trees of an evening, you know, and and it was. Uh, it was, um, it, and I'd perch up on top of this tree and I'd spy on the people as they were walking back from the pub. Now, it, you know, I mean, even for an alcoholic, it's just a bit, it's a bit bizarre, isn't it? You know, and, um, <clears throat> and, um, 
God knows what anybody would have done if they had caught me, you know what I mean? But uh, I, um, I, I became, I was just alienating myself. You know, my drinking, I mean, I lost control of my drinking, as, as, as the others have described, you know, that, that no matter how weird my behavior became, no matter how, uh, how much I began to hate myself for the, thing, for the things that I was doing, you know, and as that story indicates, you know, neglecting the people that, you know, that, that I loved the most and who loved me the most, you know, neglecting them, it was, it was, uh, um, you know, it was just, that, that was just the way it was. I've lost the thread a little bit. That was just, that was the way it was. You know, I, would, I was alienating myself, you know, from them, from society. I, I couldn't, I hated society. You know, I, I, would, I became very resentful and I became very bitter. You know, no one seemed to understand me. You know, the world seemed to revolve around me. And as I say, you know, the, as the others have said, you know, that it was just drinking was the, would become the, my lifeline. You know, uh, you know, to me, it was just the only thing that 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 made any of it bearable. You know, I was working; I never lost my job. You know, um, when I, when I was drinking, but uh, you know, I was just treading water. You know, go, doing nothing in that job. You know, it didn't mean anything to me. And um, you know, I, uh, I mean, I was I used to get up in the morning, um, you know, feeling horrendous, as Lee described, from drinking the night before. Um, <clears throat> and, I'd, and I'd get up early. This guy used to come and give me a lift about eight o'clock in the morning, and um, it was a real struggle, you know. But I would get there, and I'd, I must have stunk his van out, you know. I'd been on the vodka, and I must have actually stunk his van out. And and and, I, and I'd feel so bad that I would say to myself, "It's not happening tonight." You know, I mean, I, my wife's out working again tonight. I've got the opportunity, but I'm going to put a lid on it tonight. It's not going to happen. I'm going to I'm going to stay off the drink and look after my daughter, you know, one or two years old, like a responsible adult and not leave her alone while I went up to off license to get the beer. You know, I'm just going, it's not going to happen, basically, you know. And then two or three o'clock, as many, as, you know, as I've heard other people share, two, two, three o'clock in the afternoon, I just, I just had to get that feeling, you know, but, you know, particularly if it was a Friday, I just get that feeling, I thought, hmm, you know, yeah. You know, and I, I was as good as drunk, and this guy used to give us a lift back, to uh, to the Muckley Plain area, and by that time I'd been I'd been uh, the, the swines had taken my cash cards off me, and um, you know so I had to be able to get into the bank and tell them you know I'd give them I'd forget that whole you had to give them some rigmarole to get money out when you haven't got any cards, and um, and and the bank would close at five o'clock and this guy'd be driving up Alexander Road about five minutes to five and I'd be praying that he would get there and I'd better get out and get into that bank before it shut because if it's shut, no money, no alcohol, no twenty Marlboro. Murder, you know, and and it was just, uh, and, and you know, invariably made it, and I get in there, and I, it's just a sense of relief, you know, that I would feel, you know, when when the, when I when I got that money in my hand, oh my god, then it was off to the off license. Maybe I'd have to choose a different off license because I've been there a couple of nights before, and I didn't want to think of my, you know, problem drinker or anything, you know, and um, and it was just, you know, and I became more and more alienated, and um, you know, I, I remember the time that um. I remember the time that uh, it, I seemed like a good idea to get. I hated the world, you know. So I, was, you know, I wanted to get all my hair shaved off, you know. So, you know, people who know me in the fellowship will know that, you know, I, I, they've never seen me with my hair shaved off, and it's not a pretty sight. Not like I'm my esteemed sponsor here, who looks rather good in it. You know, it, it was, um, it was, you know, and I went down there. I, I got, I got pissed, and I went down to the barbers, and I said, "Take it all off." And he said, um, and he, he just took a little bit off, and he said, Are "You sure you want to carry on with this?" And I said, "Yeah, go ahead." And he, he whizzed the whole lot off, and I, I turned up that night drunk, with a skinhead, walked into the, walked into the bedroom, uh, and my wife, she nearly jumped out the window. I mean, she nearly, it was, it was. But I didn't, I didn't care about her, you know, and uh, it was around about that time that, you know, I'd start wandering around town with my, with my Walkman, with my, with my I, I like Pink Floyd, but they can be a bit dreary at times, and, uh, and I'd, I'd have this Pink Floyd tape going, and I'd be wandering from, and I'd have it up loud enough so that I didn't have any interference from you people, and I'd walk around town and just, and just walk from pub to pub, drinking, just drinking, drinking, hoping the money wouldn't run out, and drinking, drinking, and, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I would fly off the handle at the at the at the nearest thing, and and by this time, you know, my wife was was fighting tooth and nail to to get me to control my drinking, trying to help. She was trying to help me, but I didn't see it as help. I just saw it as interference. You know, like, again, like Wayne was saying, you know, the people just didn't understand why it was I had to drink. I had to drink. 
you know, and um, you know, she, I, you know, one time she she got she, she annoyed me something rotten, so I said, what? Well, I'll show you, you know. So uh, so I got on my as long time since I told this one. I got so I got all my LP records. Remember them, the big round things, and um, <laughs> I got all my most of my LP records, including my white vinyl copy of Reckless and Wild by Accept. There's our ash. You know, so, so the, masters, the masters of German heavy metal, uh, it's an unbelievable group, and, um, and I, even, that, even that LP, I put them in the bath and I smashed them with a hammer, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> Didn't seem to change things on the domestic front, if anything, so it kind of made them worse. You know, it was just, you know, um, and I was, uh, I mean, I wasn't, now that sounds crazy, and it is, but that's not, that wasn't my real problem. My real problem, the real insanity that I suffered from, being an alcoholic of the type described in that big book, and if you read that big book, you'll see the same kind of insanity talked about in chapter three, more about alcoholism. My, my real problem was that I was, I, I, ha, I was insane around picking up that first drink of alcohol. So no matter how much this, this you know, the, despite the mayhem, and because these things were harming people, you know, at the time I didn't think anything of it. You know, it was just poor me, where was me? But these, these, this behaviour was very, very hard. I mean, I wouldn't have stood for it, not for a bloody second, if I'd been on the other side of the fence. No way. You know, and the, the, I was harming these people beyond words. And, uh, but I, um, I would always, no matter how bad I felt about myself, I would always pick up that first drink of alcohol, even when I knew it was the last thing the absolute last thing that I should be doing. And, um, and it was, uh, you know, as I say, in a, it's the first drink that does the damage because, you know, once I take that drink of alcohol, it sets up that phenomenon of craving that it talks about in the doctor's opinion in the big book. You know, this, uh, you know I'd get a taste for it and, and, and I would be, and this craving would just develop and I, and, I, and I would drink, I'd finish the job off. You know, I'd drink until, until the job was done. That was the point of drinking. There's no point in, in doing what my wife would do Glass of sherry, thank you very much. Maybe another glass if you know if you're feeling like pushing the boat out. You know, that, that's not the way I drink. You know, so and I kind of knew that before I arrived here, but I didn't understand. I didn't really know that I was that this that my devastating weakness was my inability to stay away from the first drink. And that's not just uh, there's nothing on this. There's nothing. No human power was able to relieve me of that behaviour. None at all. You know, so uh, I was very, very fortunate that, you know, I eventually wound up at, you know, I tried a couple of meetings, you know, um, in early 94 and I wasn't, <clears throat> or just wasn't having it. And uh, I wound up at um, um, at the end of 94 in, in my first meeting of the Road to Recovery Group. And uh, as Wayne was saying, in the Pristine House downtown. And, um, and uh, I was instantly impressed by the people who had, you know, by the people who were there, you know, 12, a dozen, 15 people. You know, and, um, you know, I was, I was impressed. You know, I still couldn't imagine life without alcohol. I was still very skeptical. I still didn't want to get a sponsor. I still didn't want to do a program, you know, you know, and that sort of thing. I did, I did, you know, I wasn't quite surrendered. My ego, you know, has been described earlier, hadn't been rendered entirely ineffective, but they, they piled on me heaps of evidence, you know, and it was in the big book and these people they shared and they piled on me heaps of evidence that a person with the thinking that I was displaying around the first drink was an absolute was a goner, you know, that I was going to die, you know, may not be tomorrow, may not be next week, may not be next year, but I was going to, you know, the, the, the balance of my life was going to be awful and I would eventually end up dying. They, and I was convinced, you know, and I was convinced, and, you know, and I still didn't, you know, I still didn't want to do it, but they convinced me to take actions I didn't believe in, you know, and they, they, the 12 steps, the 12 step program of Alcoholics Anonymous as up there, as in the big book, and I, and I, and I became willing to do the simple things that my sponsor suggested. My sponsor at that time wasn't the sponsor I've got now. The sponsor I've got now is Wayne. And, um, and I, and, and I, uh, and I, 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 I thought if I could have half what that man's got, you know, by doing this program, he'd done the 12 steps. He had a sponsor. He had been, he'd been released as, as, as many, if not all of the other ones had been from this condition and, uh, a daily reprieve. And, uh, and I, and I wanted, I just, half of what he's got is going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. You know, and, uh, and that, that, I mean, that's impressive. You're an alcoholic of my type. No, I mean, that's, that is, that is unbelievable to come across someone like that who used to be like I was. 
And, um, you know, I, 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 began, I threw myself into it. You know, at long last, you know, I threw myself in, gave myself wholeheartedly to this simple program of Alcoholics Anonymous. And, um, you know, and I remember I did that fifth step. I shared my grosser handicaps, you know, and, um, you know, it turns out I was probably just an average alcoholic, but I mean, I shared my resentments and my fears, you know, I'd written them all down on paper as it, as it suggests in the book. I'd written down you know, my, um, inappropriate sexual conduct. And, um, you know, there were things on there that I didn't want to, didn't want to tell anybody. There were some things probably I had never told anybody and was never dreamt that I would tell anybody. But I took this inventory. It was a cleaning house process. It was something that had to be done. And, um, I couldn't afford to hold on to anything of my past, you know, because, you know, a person like me will not be able to overcome drinking if they do. And, um, and I was told that, you know, that these actions will be, you know, these are, I need to, I need to find a power, you know, get some faith in a power greater than myself. You know, that, um, you know, that if I was going to stay sober, combined with these actions, combined with certain simple things I was doing on a daily basis, and, and, and combined with going through the 12 steps, you know, if, I, I needed to, I needed to be willing to believe that there was a power greater than myself. You know, um, uh, God as I understand him. And I was able to, I mean, I was really, you know, really sort of uptight about that, but I mean, I, I was told that my home group, or Alcoholics Anonymous as a whole, can be, can be that power. That's, that's the, you know, just with that minimum amount of faith, combined with these actions, you know, I would, I would, I would recover. And, um, you know, so I, that's what I did. And, that, and that's not the basis on which I, I threw myself into this program. And I did that. I read out that, uh, that step five to my sponsor in his car uh, at a, at a probably quite famous location now on Dartmoor. And, um, and, 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 and I, and I remember I went home and, um, you know, and I, and I, I sort of meditated for a bit on, on what I'd done, you know, and, and I made sure I hadn't left anything out. And I instantly thought of a few things I had left out, but, you know, so I rang him up and said, Oh, by the way, and there's this, this, and this, <laughs> you know, and, and then I went to the Sunday night meeting, the road to recovery group in uh, payroll as it was then. And I rocked through that door. I mean, it was unbelievable. You know, I couldn't, it was just, I mean, I've been rocketed into the fourth dimension. You know, I, 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 you know, as Wayne often shares, you know, I saw, I felt, I believed. And I was, I knew, I mean, Bill, Bill says in his story, you know, so this is the God of the preachers. And that's not the way I, that's not the phrase that came into my mind, my dear, but, but, you know, but this is what they're talking about. You know, it makes me shiver now to think about it. Now, this is what they were talking about. This is why they kept going on week after week after week about getting a sponsor and, and getting a big book and doing this program because they knew that if I did that, I would get this. I would get what they've got. And, um, you know, to say that I was amazed is just an absolute <coughs> understatement, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, and it just, uh, and it just, just cracked on, you know, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I had to force myself to do these further steps and I forced myself to do this step eight where I made a list of people I'd harmed and you know, I became willing to make amends to them. And then in step nine, I started to, I started to go out to these people, first port of call, you know, the good lady wife at home. You know, make amends, you know, sincerely apologize for, for, you know, what I'd done. And, um, you know, it was, uh, I mean, it was just breathtaking, you know, and I ca- carried on and I saw, saw, saw other people that I'd harmed, went around and see my mother-in-law and father-in-law. And, you know, things were changing and I'd been transformed by doing this 12-step program. Transformed. I mean, when I came in, when, when I was drinking, especially in the last days of my drinking, my mother-in-law was like an ogre to me. You know, you, you know, just, I mean, you're like the old mother-in-law jokes, you know, but with, but, but nasty, you know, and it was, and it, and that's, and that's how today and for many, many years, I love it when she comes around. I love going around there. I want to stay longer. The wife's saying, you know, we've got time to go, we've got to make tea and, and I'm, you know, and I, I love it. And now I'm sure she, you know, she's a spiritual person. She's probably been growing in the last 15 years, but, but it's, I mean, it, that, it, it's because I've changed. I have changed so much by doing this program that my perspective on the world and on the people in it has changed fundamentally, you know, and uh, it's, it's enabled me, you know, as, as, as Nick often says, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, those, you people, those people don't annoy me to the degree that you once did, you know, so much so that I'm able to live a day at a time in this world free from alcohol without the compulsion to drink. When I was new, and people would say, I've been released from the compulsion to drink, I said, I just, just I couldn't believe it. I thought, you must be different. My case must be different because the, the, my 
dependence, my reliance, my obsession with alcohol is so great. I can't imagine life without it. I mean, I didn't drink every day, but I couldn't, so, so hard to imagine life without alcohol. You must be different. You know, and that, and that, as we often hear in Al- Alcoholics Anonymous, that's, that feeling of difference is one of the things that kills people like me. You know, feeling that, you know, my case is that much different. I don't, you know, it's not going to work for me. I don't have to do what you're doing. Really, you know, I guess a lot of it is about what Wayne was saying about, you know, protecting that inner integrity, being the master of my own destiny. And, um, you know, really, you know, that may be the dubious luxury of, <clears throat> you know, normal folks. But for me, I have to defer to, I have to get this sponsor, and I have to defer to this person who, who, who has, has, has walked the road ahead of me, you know, and is, and is doing the same things. And, you know, to have a home group and, 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 and act, you know, with deference around my home group, do the things that my home group wants me to do, you know, so, so consequently, I've started my second stint as tea, tea boy, um, you know, uh, uh, last Sunday, you know, so, um, 15 years after the first one. Uh, and, and, and what a cracking team we are too. And, um, it's, uh, ably assisted, so other way around, by, uh, by my good sponsor. And, um, on that note, you know, I cannot, cannot, I don't know how long I've got, but I cannot stand up here on my 15th sober birthday and not express the, it's hard to put into words, the gratitude that I have, not just for all this, this, obviously for the whole group, for the people who come in here and make it what it is, you know, but for those two founder members who are still here, who still come here regularly, rain or shine. First one being Wayne, my sponsor, and Alexis over there. And, um, you know, it's, uh, the memories, you know, I've told you some of the, you know, the, 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 the humorous stories and the tragedies from the past, but the, the memories of being in this group with these people, ready to catch me when I fall, which, which I do occasionally, and, you know, and, you know, t- and kind of is just, uh, it's just that. I mean, it's just that, you know, and it's, um, you know, you know, it says in the book, we'll be bound together with new and wonderful ties, you know, and, and it's just, it's just been the most magic journey. I can tell you it's been the most magic journey. And, um, you know, and I just got to keep doing the things that, that I know are right when I've got to my time. Because I'm a long, a long, long way from being perfect. In fact, one of my faults is to try and be perfect, you know, and it's, um, you know, it's ne- never really worked, you know. I've seen people, you know, I've seen all sorts of people come in, you know, people who are like me, you know, really sick ones like Mike and, you know, over there and, you know, and other people, you know, who, who, um, Hard to get through to people like Andy Red Jacket. You know, all these people, you know, they've come in and this program has not, you know, this, they've succumbed to this program. I joke, you know, I'm sicker than both of them. And, um, and, and they are, they, everyone who has given their all to this program has, has succumbed to the power of the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, as I did. I had to surrender and, uh, I had, I had to be beaten, you know, because a person like me, you know, as I said before, as someone said before, you know, defiant to the core, you know, will not do this unless, you know, unless, uh, you know, unless my back is against the wall big time. And um, the insanity of my drinking was what convinced me. The unmanageability of my life was what convinced me. And, um, you know, today, you know, I live a blessed life, you know, and the, the, the you know, I'm, I'm at my happiest, you know, when I'm, when I'm here, you know, when I'm here trying to, trying to help other alcoholics. Of course, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy at home. You know, that, uh, that little kid that was, you know, suffering me going out and, uh, and, um, leaving her home alone while she, I uh, tucked her up in a cot. You know, she's, she's driving around now, you know, uh, in, uh, you know, you know, she's driving me around. You know what I mean? She's 17 years old. There's another one I've left at home tonight doing the washing up. Who's, it's, it's not the same, don't worry. 13 years old, never seen me drunk. Ne- never seen me drunk. Doesn't know what it's like. Knows I come here. Comes in in the morning and I'm on my knees praying to God for another sober day, reading my big book. Just comes in, turns the computer on. Does it? You know, it's just normal. You know, it's, it's just normal for them to see me doing this stuff. And um, you know, it, I mean, and they are, uh, they teach me a lot. You know, as 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 you people do. Anybody who's done this program. And um, I uh, just, uh, if you knew. You know, suspend your disbelief, if you like. Susp- try and suspend that any skepticism you have, like I had. And above all, don't think that your case is different, because it isn't. Okay? Just get a sponsor, get a copy of the big book, you know, and do this, do what's suggested, 
come in here, try and get a job, cleaning, tea, whatever, you know, just, just do it, throw yourself in, and despite how you feel about it now, you too will be rocketed into the fourth dimension. And uh, I'll leave it there, thanks. <laughs>